All right, testing one, two. What's up, Dr. Jen? Um, this is gonna be the long story of how I got to where I'm at. Currently, I am a senior product manager at EA, working within the Positive Play Group, and their job is to make sure that gaming is fair, safe, balanced, uh, etc., across all of EA's games. So, Battlefield, Plants vs. Zombies, Skate, um, all those games, The Sims, all those games. So I'm trying to make sure that, that people, they go into it, those games, they experience it, it's safe, it's not disruptive, etc. Um, and I just want to give, uh, this is going to be the long story on how I got from this position from where I was, which was in aerospace. So to start off, um, I think it's important to have some context because I have a feeling that a lot of people who would be in this career seminar start from a similar position that I, I'm in. Um, I grew up in Yonkers, New York, um, to a humble parent, one person who's a carpenter, one person a teacher. And in their belief, like most people growing up in the 90s in New York, uh, the way to get out, the way to through social mobility is to go to college, get a really nice paying career, uh, get a really nice 401k because pensions don't exist anymore and retire comfortably in your 50s. And uh, you want to get a good job as a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, etc. Where I grew up, um, it was very segregated, I would say. Um, it's not segregated by law, but segregated through school zones. So uh, I went to like the best schools with what like little money that my city had. Um, I, I grew up on video games. Like at three years old, I was playing games on Windows 95. Uh, like games like Reader Rabbit, Math Blasters, Pajama Sam, Putt Putt. Uh, I, I, the first time I ever even went to an arcade, it was like I was in heaven. Uh, I've always been in love with video games, but it had never seemed like an option for me to be able to make that into my career. That was just something that people who were people who were white and people who were born of privilege was only able to obtain. Especially like growing up in the 90s, that was all I would see is that people who were of a very privileged position or people who grew up on the West Coast, like in LA, they had the privilege of being, a being able to take their hobby and make it into a career and be able to eat off of it, start a family off of it, etc. So I never saw that as an option. And growing up, I always, uh, I w it was like instilled in me that if I were to obtain any type of success that I had to give back. And so I never really felt like I could take a career path that was only for my personal benefit. I, I had to choose a career that would benefit as many people as possible. Uh, so like going going through high school, um, I was really into like military stories. Like I used to love history. I used to love war stories. And I was really drawn to engineering. And so uh, when I, I did like robotics club when I was in school and that led me to a career in aerospace and defense. Um, I, I really wanted to work on robots, and those were the biggest robots in existence outside of uh, rockets that go to space. Um, so I, I took that career path after I graduated um, college in 2015. But I, when I got into the industry, I quickly realized that um, I was just a really, really small cog in a giant machine, and that I wasn't exactly needed, um, and I, it was going to take a lot for me to make the impact that I wanted on the world. Uh, like I can make sure that the weapons that we make for this country keep us safe, but did I really wanna dedicate my life towards making things that harm people? Uh, I truly wanted to do things that make people happy, make love, not war. And so um, in 20, I would say like about 2018, 2017, 2018, I was really questioning uh, if what I was doing was helping people. and. Every day I watch the news and see that, like, even though I'm keeping us safe here, I, I feel like I'm oppressing the world. So what is it that I can do to make a difference? And in 2017, I started streaming. I had, like, my own platforms, uh, twitch.tv slash Cyforce, and I, I would dedicate my time towards uh, teaching the youth what it's like to be a man in this world, um, what it's like to uh, be a good person in this world. Uh, my, my target audience was between the ages of 15 and 35. They would come through my stream, just chill, and just ask me questions. We would just talk about life. And it was great. It was a creative outlet for me where I would be able to play video games uh, during my off time when I'm not working in aerospace and defense. And I'd be able to help people out. 
I, I did that for from 2017 to about that's like 2016 to about 2020 when the pandemic happened. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, as we were all uh, at home, we saw that George Floyd video and it was like absolutely repulsive. And then we saw uh, a lot of mass protests that were happening and um, most protests were very peaceful, but uh, some, the ones that would get attention from the news were very, very violent. And uh, uh, it made me see that, uh, that the online space wasn't safe at all. Um, and uh, I, I suffer from asthma, so I never went out to go protest. Cause I thought that if I went out and got COVID-19 that I, pro I may not survive it. Or if I did survive, I would have really strong complications. So I spent a lot of su the summer of 2020, well, all of the pandemic before the vaccine, I spent it inside on the internet just watching what was going on. And it made me realize that online gaming, like not online gaming, but just being online is not safe at all. Uh, like people can uh, put out false information and it can rile up really large swaths of people and they can go out there with a false cause and cause a lot of harm. And I saw that that could be an opportunity for me to be able to use my skills, to be able to use my voice and to be able to use my perspective from where I grew up to be able to make the world a better place as opposed to what I was currently doing in aerospace. Uh, so from there, I, I sought out uh, jobs that dealt with the online space. They call it trust and safety. And at that point is where I found the Fair Play Alliance, which is a, a group that um, they, they basically study interactions between players and try to figure out how you can make online gaming safe for players. So like uh, a CSAM, which is like a child sexual abuse material, um, uh, oh, just basically online harassment and then just like your everyday toxicity, which is now called disruptive behavior. So uh, a good example would be uh, if I'm on Overwatch, you're on Overwatch and we both talk in comms, someone would hear that you're a woman and immediately start ragging on you and not want to play because you're a woman or someone would hear that I'm black and immediately start pointing that out. So they, the Fair Play Alliance looks at interactions like that and they try to make gaming less disruptive. And I, I've... But everyone knows that when you play online multiplayer, there's like an accepted, it's not accepted. It's accepted from people that playing online and certain games with voice comms is just going to be a bad time. So either you have to mute or you have to deal with it. And I saw that as an opportunity for me to make a difference. And so I started seeking out jobs in that space. Um, so this is 2020. 2021 was when uh, I saw like January 6th happen. And all like all that organization, all the information that fed them to go do that stuff happened either at rallies or online. And uh, at that point, I realized I really needed to leave the defense industry because there was a, a lot of people from my industry who would go to those rallies and they would spread the informa the misinformation that was going on. They would spread it like throughout the industry. Um, and I didn't really want to be a part of that. So uh, mid-2021, I quit my job. Uh, I quit. I let. I retired from my career. I'm not going back to defense anymore. Uh, and just basically took the savings that I had and was was laser focused on obtaining a job in the gaming industry. So this is where the story actually starts. But I just wanted to give that background because I, I feel like that's important. Um, so when I left in 2021, um, I, I had as a streamer, I had went to a lot of conventions to market myself, to meet other streamers, to meet. Uh, sponsors. So I understood that if I wanted to get a job in the game industry, that I had to go out to conventions too. So I went to PAX West. That was my first convention last year, September 2021. And I basically just walked around and, and talked to people and asked them, how did they get there in their game de development journey? And there was like two, there's like two major pieces of how people broke into the industry. One was either they went to school for it, which is like, you're lucky to be born in an area where that is even available and your parents um, believe in you enough to be able to take a career path that isn't proven to be super profitable like other career paths. So either they went to school for it or they networked and found their way into the industry. So um, after talking to tens of people and hearing the other side of how people networked and got their way into the industry, um, everyone always start off their story. I didn't take the traditional way, but after talking to 50 people, there is a traditional way. The two, the two paths I mentioned, I realized that I needed to network my way there. I needed to understand the lingo. 
uh, and how it was different from aerospace. Um, the highest position that I achieved in aerospace was program management. So program management exists in game industry too. So I had to figure out how do how does program management how does it differ in the gaming industry and what are the skills I need to acquire in order to get a job uh, within trust and safety in games. Uh, uh, in in doing that and studying that, I bought books uh, and read read books. I went on YouTube and watched like hundreds of interviews, like uh, interview like people interviewing for the jobs that I wanted. And at the same time, I found a startup called Indie Game Academy, which gave me a chance to practice what I was learning. So Indie Game Academy, they hired me on as their uh, first ever product manager, and I was able to exercise uh, the things I was learning in order to make the Indie Game Academy more profitable. Uh, but Indie Game Academy is basically a, a startup that tries to teach game developers how to create their own indie studios. And they have a class where they walk teams through the process of ideating a game, uh, executing the building of a game, and marketing it. And so for my job as a product manager is to make sure that that program was successful and to make sure the students felt like they were getting what they paid for. Um, where we met was at GDC. And I went to GDC... Uh, the same reason why I went to PAX West, PAX West in hopes that I would be able to network and understand um, how I can get a job in the gaming industry. Uh, by March of 2022, at that time, I had been through like four, like five or six interviews. And every single time I felt really, really close to getting an interview, but I wasn't the right person for uh, the jobs that I was looking for. Uh, so I went to GDC. I actually, I, I remember meeting you there, Dr. Killam, uh, Dr. Jen. I remember meeting you there. I met a whole bunch of other people there. And uh, from GDC, after talking to a lot of people, I had like three really great opportunities came up for interviews. Uh, they didn't work out. But an interview that I had taken back in September, uh, he didn't want to hire me at the time because I wasn't ready yet. But the, the person ended up leaving that company and going to EA. And because I had that relationship, um, I... He, I, he he told me back in, let's say like October 2021, that he was going to be ramping up and hiring somebody for, hiring a product manager for his team. And I knew that he would be hiring someone. So basically I just, just training. I was literally training myself for that position. And every day, every month, once a month, I would have a conversation with him to talk to him about um, what were the things that I was learning and how I was working towards becoming a product manager that worked in trust and safety in games and my thoughts on the industry, things like that. Uh, so I, I maintained that relationship with this person at EA while I was doing all this learning, uh, going to conferences, talking to people, getting my name out there, consistently interviewing. And when the time came that I got the interview opportunity with EA, um, all that training paid off, all those talks paid off, and I got the job. I ended up getting the job in July, uh, I'll say August of 2022 was my first day. Um, so it wasn't easy at all. Uh, like the way I'm telling the story is very much like it's beginning to end. But when you're in the middle of it, you don't see the end. <laughs> I remember in May before I had the interview at EA, I had three interviews lined up from GDC and they all like I, I interviewed and they all fell through. Like just something came up each and every single time. And I remember looking at my bank account to ask myself, how much longer can I afford to do this? And when I got the job at EA, I was literally on like my last dollars before I would have to either go back to defense or go flip burgers at Burger King or do something. Uh, go panhandle on the corner, do something. I don't know. But I was on my very last pennies. So uh, I would really like to join the career seminar. I would love to join your panel because I have a feeling that there's a whole bunch of people just like me uh, that will be sitting there in the audience. Um, I have been to panels like this before, before I got a job in gaming. I want to say um, maybe it was TwitchCon or maybe it was a, another, a different GDC that where I sat in on a career panel and I, I asked questions virtually and I got the response, the responses that I wanted and I followed some of their advice. And so I would love an opportunity to be able to give back, just like how people who are CAs were giving back to new CAs like me. So, I don't know, my story is all over the place. I'll, I'll write something down if you would like, but that's my story. I hope you like it, and I hope you will allow me to be on your panel. So thank you very much for this opportunity, Dr. Jen, and I'll talk to you soon, or I'll see you in San Francisco at GDC. Peace.